Hello everyone, thank you for coming back. I'm Yaniv Hoffman and today we'll speak about Stuxnet, the world's first digital weapon. Let's start. So Stuxnet is much dreaded worm that become the world's first digital weapon. Its destruction capabilities have no limits and can affect anyone, anytime. You can imagine how vulnerable regular networks are in front of Stuxnet when it can easily exploit highly guarded defense setups of nations. But before talking about Stuxnet, let's first address a crucial question. Can cyber warfare result in World War III? Did you think about it? And if I say cyber warfare can cause greater destruction than all the world wars, including the ongoing conflict between Russia and Ukraine, most viewers, I assume, will dismiss it, saying that I'm talking to my head. However, it is an undeniable fact Thanks to Stuxnet, we live in a world where malicious code can destroy physical machinery and critical information infrastructure, disrupt the power supply, throw financial and health systems out of gear, bring down governments or nation states, and even start a war. That can escalate to World War III. So let's see what viruses and worms are and understand the degree of destruction they can inflict on civilization globally. Any discussion on cybersecurity attacks would be incomplete without referring to Stuxnet war. Stuxnet has the distinction of being officially declared the world's first malware that acted as a digital weapon. Have you noticed that I have used the word worm instead of commonly used term virus? There is a specific reason. Worms are distinct from viruses. The primary difference is that viruses are triggered by activating their host computers and networks. In contrast, worms are standalone malicious programs code capable of acting without a trigger, self-propagating and self-replicating as soon as they breach the system. So let's see what Stuxnet is. And Stuxnet is a sophisticated digital worm whose specific objective was to disrupt the centrifuges used to produce enriched uranium powering nuclear weapons and reactors in Iran. When Iranian nuclear reactors are the target, the finger of suspicion naturally points towards the US and Israel as the prime forces behind the attack. So why was Stuxnet deployed? And Stuxnet was purposely deployed as a tool to delay or derail the Iranian nuclear development program. The following reasons sustainable this claim. If Iran starts developing nuclear capabilities, Israel could launch airstrikes leading to a regional war. Secondly, Stuxnet was never intended to be used or other for disrupting the Iranian nuclear facility as Natanz. Let us now understand why Stuxnet qualify as a computer worm. The nuclear facility at Natanz, this is a city by the way in Iran, was air-gapped and not connected to the internet. Therefore, the malware could not be transmitted to the internet. Instead, it used external storage or communication devices transported inside the nuclear plant by a third party. Despite being targeted at the Iranian nuclear facility, the worm found its way into other Windows operated system to the internet and spread worldwide. However, it didn't damage external information systems because it concentrated on attacking the specific Iranian nuclear facility. So how was Stuxnet discovered? Though Stuxnet was launched as early as 2009, it was not discovered until January 2010. 
during a routine inspection of the nuclear facilities in 2010. The International Atomic Energy Agency inspectors noticed that the centrifuge in reaching uranium were failing at an unprecedented rate. Iranian technicians were also baffled as it remained a mystery. In June 2010, Iran called a special team from Belarus to troubleshoot a series of terminals crashing and repeatedly rebooting. Though the reason behind those happenings was mystery initially, researchers eventually discovered a handful of malicious files on the system that led to the unveiling of the world's first digital weapon, Stuxnet. Kaspersky lab researchers established the link between those phenomena and uncovered the Stuxnet epidemic to a unique reverse engineering method. Stuxnet had an interesting way to alert new copies of Stuxnet that the underlying computer had already been infected by setting a registry value of 19790509. Of course, it's a date value, but it coincidentally with the date of a Parisian Jew that was executed in Iran in a claim for spying to Israel. So how did Stuxnet work? Now that we know the origins of the Stuxnet worm, let's see how the worm works. The Alex Gabinsi directed American documentary film Zero Days covers the Stuxnet cyber attack and the development of the malicious software named Olympic Games. The film shows how the Symantec team demonstrated Stuxnet ability to wreck evoc using PLCs. A PLC or programmer logic controller is a digital computer designed for industrial automation to automate various electromechanical processes. The sequence shows then programming a Siemens PLC to inflate a balloon and infect a controlled PC with the Stuxnet worm. While it was programmed to inflate the balloon for five seconds, the controller continued blowing it until it burst. The Stuxnet worm worked using the same logic. The code was written in such a way that infecting only an handful of machines could wreak havoc. During those days, nobody thought about attacking industrial controllers using PLCs. I'm not sure that people knew what is a PLC anyway. However, as a nuclear plant was air-gapped from the internet, the remote attackers could not access the network systems directly. Hence, they used infected USB flash drives to introduce the stack next one. The program code was written in such a way that it was checking if the infected machine had the latest version of the code. If not, it was updating the firmware in the PLCs with the commands that it could use to do whatever it wanted and cause the damage. They started by infecting computers belonging to five external organizations connected with the Natanz plant. And you can see it now on the screen. You can read the entire story in the book Countdown to Zero Day, written by Kim Zetter. The book describes how cyber warfare possesses the same destructive capabilities as the Megaton nuclear bomb. So the Stuxnet attack timeline. By 2009, Iran had developed its nuclear capabilities and crossed a significant milestone by producing 839 kilograms of low-enriched uranium. It was sufficient to achieve nuclear weapon breakout capability. Experts stated that at this rate, Iran could have generated sufficient enriched uranium to produce two nuclear weapons within a year. However, Iran had installed IR-2 centrifuge in its pilot plant. These advanced centrifuges were considerably more potent than the IR-1 centrifuge. Around 1,200 IR-2 centrifuges were sufficient to generate enriched uranium equivalent to the quantity from 3,000 IR-1 centrifuges. The cyber attackers work with the sole aim of slowing down Iran's progress. Hence, they chose the five external organizations as the gateway to Natanz to infected employees. Since these entitles 
had access to the nuclear plant. The cyber attackers used them to spread the worm and infect the Natanz nuclear network systems using infected USB flash drives. And here is a summary of the dates on which Stuxnet infiltrated the five external organizations. You can see it since 2009 to 2010. By the way, it's where the worm was spread out as a global epidemic technicalities behind the Stuxnet attack. We shall now discuss the technicality of how the Stuxnet worm worked its way into the network system and affected the nuclear plant's functions. After starting the infection, Stuxnet replaced two DLLs to attack the software on a PLC, while one DLL <laughs> inserted the malicious code into the PLC, the other fingerprinted the target systems to build the PLC data block to attack the PLC. The attack code searched for symbols identifying the target as Sematic 400 or a Sematic H station. It looked for cascade module identifiers in the range of A21 to A28 corresponding to the cascade modules in the Natanz nuclear plant. The PLC attack code attacked the valves to either increase the rotting speed or the time and thus subvert the system's operation by damaging the centrifuges. It simultaneously hid its attack by recording snapshots of the non-faulty behavior of the centrifuges and replacing the fault data with them during the attack. It actually, think about it, replaced the original DLL commands to the attacker's command and mask it to present different visibility to the operators. Though it's not clear how long Stuxnet took to reach its targets and achieve it, its objectives, the number of centrifuges in reaching uranium dropped drastically between June and August 2009 from 4,920 to 4,592. By November, the figure dropped further even to 3,936. Though new machines were being installed, they were not being fed gas. We now know how Stuxnet infected the Natanz nuclear planet and affected its nuclear capabilities drastically. This fact compels us to ponder how to equip industries to eliminate such vulnerabilities. The Stuxnet attack, how to counter it? The Stuxnet attack has proved to be a historical moment in the context of control system cybersecurity. As these threats are adaptive and sophisticated, the defense mechanism should offer improved protection at three levels. One, high quality network protection for security against the initial attack vectors. Second, improving the host security to block the worm or malware ability to infect the SCADA systems and the PLCs controlled by them. And last but not least, enhancing situational awareness to detect such incidents early. The digital Pandora, evolution since Stuxnet and emerging threats. The unearthing of Stuxnet and its functioning was not the end of it as many consider the world's first digital weapon. It paved the way for many new attack vectors, weapons, and future attacks. Stuxnet attack proved that compromising one machine was enough to penetrate the organization security perimeter. Stuxnet continues to inspire cyber adversaries to increase privacy, cyber terrorism, cyber warfare, etc. It can be leveraged to create new cyber weapons that can continue to target industrial control system devices. Stuxnet is just the beginning of more sophisticated cyber Kentic attacks. A cyber Kentic attack targets cyber physical and industrial systems and causes direct or indirect physical damages. So what are the lessons learned from Stuxnet attack? Later, Semantic researchers discovered that Stuxnet used four different zero-day vulnerabilities present in Microsoft Windows operating system to barge into and spread around. The Stuxnet attack is unique because it combines stolen certificates 
and multiple zero-day exploits to deliver a payload that disrupt a critical industrial process. Moreover, targeting a uranium enrichment facility has proved that cybercrime does not have boundaries. If cyber attackers can target such high security defense facilities thought to be untouchable due to their isolation of security and specialized function, it can easily trigger a world war. The Stuxnet story emphasized the need for adopting and improving cybersecurity measures to protect critical industries from malware that use digital weapons for activities as severe as destabilizing a nation's function capabilities. If you read so far, hope it was insightful for you as it was enjoyable for me. Thank you very much. If you are still not subscribed, please do. It will only take a minute and see you in the next video. Thanks.